play around positioning, around objectives, things like this. Something that Faker has been very, very good at um, very recently as aiming is going to jump on the Kaiser hype train. Him and Deft together on this one. And uh, we saw it work very well in the dive compositions put together by DRX. Uh, the champion that Faker really uh, showed us is very, very powerful uh, in the meta at the moment. Uh, fits into this composition as well. So Vickler has a lot of agency himself to really demonstrate but not going to be easy. He's loving this. Oh, this could really work out here. As, yep, that's the smite. Owner's going to have to flash to get himself out of here. And Cuz is going to say, well, thanks very much for the red buff. No smite, remember. But what? Oh, my God, Cuz. No. Oh. Busy scheduling okay. uh, of, of, you know, clearing your own camps. Oh, it's right. Oh, it gets out. Let's take a look at the health. Again. Yeah, can't take it out, Yeah. Just letting them know that he has smite. <gasps> oh. It's a party! That was avoided. That's a great hook to come through. Vikla over the wall, level 8 as well. So Spirit rushing around. There's the ulti from Cuz. That's going to lock down the first kill. He gets revenge in that moment as Faker's now looking for aiming and he will claim his kill. And now Gumiushi looking for Cuz, looking for Vikla. Not a lot of mana, but the flash comes forward. The charm is there. Gumiushi's going to flash. Can he keep himself alive? The answer is absolutely not as Faker getting chased by Cuz here, moves back to his distortion and doesn't want to pick the fight with the full health Ari. Uh, T1 thought they were setting the bait, but it was actually KT who was baiting for the bait as... Yeah, well, here's this the one. ulti. Rascal's going to get stunned up for a moment. There's the needlework. The flash comes through. And Life is going to be successful with his gank towards the top side. Flash for the cannon. Uh, very, very valuable no, 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 as this. No, no. Yeah, this is dangerous. Owner comes on over. And now Kaz getting pushed back. This means that Drake into Rift Herald drop on the bottom side of the map is an option. Oh, that's a big wave yeah, back this... there. Oh, aiming. Oh, no. Yeah. He's... Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is how it goes. And this is actually going to be a gigantic swing in power in favor oh. of uh, T1. They'll get this whole tower. And all of a sudden it went from KT trading up in a fight to a colossal loss. Wide is Rek'Sai, combination is picked up as oh. yeah, There's a Hebba Pole. That is going to be a Super Mega Death Rocket that took a bunch of spectators by and said, oh, here is a kill on a Rek'Sai. And they looked out the window, they saw it, they were like, oh, that's great. Golf clap Ooh. for that one. Um, Vikla also in this mid lane trying to find something to do, but not really able to do so. And it feels like Car Carry has been unlocked on this cow, and that is terrifying. Yeah, because now they swap up towards the top side as yeah. Yeah, Ona taking a lot of damage here. Vikla turns up in the nick of time, aiming, diving forward. Ona surviving for so dang long as Gumiushi comes on over. The gun's going to work out here as the Gale Force employed. Zap not going to connect there as Kaz makes his way back. But it becomes so hard, Faker. Yeah, Everfrost is going to come through there. Chains have connected. The flash comes out. Let's see whether Faker can get himself out of this one. Does make his way back, but yeah, it's very hard to outplay. The yeah, ultimate yes. from the Rex I as Cuz now trying to hide in a brush. It's not really going to work out. As you can see, it's we're just looking for some revenge, but the cow's gonna go down first. They do manage to kill Cuz, but can they actually win the fight? Is the question as Zayas comes up and says, absolutely I can, but the Gwen was immune for a large portion of that ultimate. And I don't think T1 are gonna be able to get too much more. And that does mean that it's another trade up for KT. Pretty difficult margins. Yes, this is going to be Cuz um, taking almost uh, loses that one, but not this time. Uh, it will be a cloud soul, obviously, and uh, now gives teams the opportunity to get the best buff in the universe. Void Seeker going to come out, lands onto Ona there. The needlework's coming in as well, and I think Zayas knows that his jungler is very dead. T1 going to bring the cavalry in now as Gumiushi gets himself over the wall. Zayas with a massive ultimate. They're towards that top side now. Rascal running for the hills. It's a really nice fadeaway charm there, but it's not going to save the Gwen. And there is the revenge T1 were looking for. And, and yep. works perfectly fine. It would have been. Because uh, now, I do think that the MR stacking should come through from T1 as Zayus. Yeah, Rascal going to get caught out of position here, but aiming's going to turn up. Immediately, Gwen. the exhaust comes in as Ona secures the kill. Depth charge to come down as Faker has joined the fight, but immediately it's a double kill for Vikla. 
and Faker is going to have to run away. The distortion comes in, and maybe it's just a 1v1 between him and Hold Life. Up. Meanwhile, out towards the other side. It's Cuz with a big old shield that comes through. He's looking for the pickoff on Gumiyushi, but he's got a cow there helping him out. Cuz is now being lit on fire, and Gumiyushi is pretty scary. The flash comes forward. He misses the knockup on the Jinx, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the teammates are here, and now Carrier is well and truly dead. KT, they find the picks. Let's see what more they can get. I saw the Ari lock in and it was like a Vikla. Okay, yeah, I get it. You're trying to keep away Ari from Faker. Absolutely not. No, this this went oh, oh this God. went from it wasn't working to this is a 1v9. That's gonna equal the gold. Yeah. If they get it. And, and this Baron is, is unanswerable. Owner's never gonna be here in time. Ooh, Zayas doesn't have his ulti, but could still be frustrating. Faker over the wall, but look at this. It's going down way too quickly. They dive into the pit because does have the smite. They try to get in there to lock this one down, but Faker is going to die. Now in the back of the pit, trying to get some stragglers picked off. Super Mega Death Rocket connects. Q is going to land on a Vickler there as well, who does eventually just ult over the wall, and Rascal, of course, can dash. So he was never going oh, to die. So let him find anyone. It's uh, Zeus. Okay. Rascal just going to get solo Whoa. killed by the Lightning Rat. And that's, that's what happens when your cannon builds literally the most damage you can possibly build. Yep, and it did. So everything, uh, everything turned out well. Indeed, uh, Life going to face plant the wall as Super Mega Death Rocket will be stopwatched, but now Life doesn't have that. Ooh, very, very close to that zap picking up the yeah. kill as Carrier is oh. going uh. for a big rotation. Does get spotted on the minion wave, a lot of pings. Go up towards the cow as he is trying to walk this one off. Avoids both the Everfrost and the Charm as Faker comes on over as well. Carrier, not even going to die. He's got the Unbreakable Will and now Zayas has found the site. Holds onto the ultimate one more time. Locks down the kill onto the Ari. He gets exhausted, but the Lightning Rush is there. Gets so much health back. It's the Flash Forward from Life that finally gets the cannon, but aiming is going to go down as well. Cuz is going to get taken for a walk and Faker secures the kill. KT on the ropes. Man, have you written it down already? Have you? There you go. There you go. T1 now pushing down that top lane. I think Kennen might be coming back to, uh, you know, one of the key picks uh, for the LCK, and I absolutely love to see it. Oh, Korean Kennemans, they don't stop, and it is Carrier that goes on a merry journey in the top side of the map, and the rest of the team this time around is there to back them up. KT couldn't quite get the assassinations they were looking for. It was close until it wasn't. It was. And I actually think that KT can hold their heads incredibly high after Agreed. this game number one. Absolutely fantastic play out of Vikla. I think even though Kuz had an absolute horror story of a start with that red buff being stolen away by... Shocker. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Pun. honestly, I really liked what KT pulled out here. I don't think it was enough, as we mentioned. Uh, Could also play his Callista again. He got an armor buff on this patch deck, yeah. But it's likely to be the Kaiser again, and that one will be locked away. Um, but this is one of uh, Carrier's playmaking champions. This is one of his uh, POG farming champions. Uh, his Thresh is extraordinarily good and does turn T1's composition into a bit of a pick option themselves, right? Well, we don't see it often into Nautilus, so might be somewhat of a problem. Uh, if life can push that matchup as far as he would like. Yes, what can say? It's a lot of fun. And that is going to be a great one. Out from life, the play comes back as Gumiushi's been lit on fire, but does get to safe distance. Not at safe health bar, though, and will have to back away from this one. Life taking this as his opportunity to move on forward. Hook is going to connect, though, back into the flame choppers. Now Gumiushi's trying to turn it around. The zap is going to connect, but he ate his potion, and so he's going to be all right. The Lee Sin no longer in the area. No one's going to be able to punish. As T1 do move back into control of this lane. Oh, man. It's getting a bit scary obfuscate the actual awareness and tracking of the uh, of the opposing team jungler, but then Ona gets immediately. So uh, that's the end of it. It's Zeus Ghosts. Yeah, also throws out the needlework. And uh, Rascal just going to accept those cooldowns. Dash comes through here, is now Kuz at level six, going to move on over, gets the Chilling Smite, and this is going to be very difficult for Zeus to survive. 
is uh, going to buy a little bit of time by doing some alcove gaming. Love me some alcove gaming. However, First Blood will still go over to KT. Rek'Sai's on the board. The rest of the map going very, very well here. Already a plate going down on the top side as Kerry is going to flash and will get himself out of the way of danger, but that is still a big cooldown. No longer there. Hex flashes for both of our supports, though, as Ona finds a Q under life. Safeguard. Cool drink also done. Kraken Slayer also done, as you pointed out. Yeah, that Everfrost is going to connect. The chains are going to land as well. Hook comes through, and Super Mega Death Rocket will secure the kill. Life, absolutely nothing he could have done. And getting picks against the pick comp. It's good news here for T1 fans. Carrier caught out of position there with a charm. But Vickler not going to be enough to lock down the kill. And this may just mean... And when it comes to trading up in turrets, T1 just always seem to get the lead. Yes, it's uh, Guma. Well, that is a depth charge. He's going to get a knock up onto two. Good dredge line comes on down, but Rascal's in the area. Life going to get taken out. Carrier is going to be traded. Gumiushi very dead now as Ona looking to come in. Cuz down very low, but it's a great scoop from Rascal to deny any follow up. And it will be a trade up. The bottom lane entirely has been wiped out here of T1 and KT only lose life. One for two trade there, very nicely done. Seems like initially T1 happy to take that one, but life in the end saying worth in all chat, I'm quite sure. Vikla now has the Everfrost available as well, as still we're looking at Zeus and Rascal. This is not fair though. Yeah, Everfrost does come through here as Zeus trying to trade it back. The hops used defensively, and with the mist, <laughs> I think Gwen. Gwen is unable to be injured. Be valuable for T1. I don't think that KT necessarily get hard outscaled or anything like that, but Rek'Sai becomes less and less of a champion as the game goes on. Oh, yeah. Is uh, basically the theory. As Faker looking for life here, but he might just get picked off. He is going to get taken down. Vikla collects the kill. Now Carrier trying to get them into position that they want. The kickback is going to come through right on top of the chompers. And Carrier is going to get that kill, I believe, with an ignite in the end. Love the trade. Mid laners both go down. As Gumiushi looking to see whether he can also get himself a turret. Rascal, oh. the Narbar is in great position right now, and the flash goes forward. Cuz tries to lock down the Jinx, and he will be able to grab her. And now the rocks are raining through. Ona now trying to get out. That was one of the shortest little safeguards I've ever seen, but it is going to be enough to get Ona to safety as Carrier brings Hold them up. over. What? Okay, well, Rascal is just going to get gifted the kill of the Thrash, and now Ona has to go for a much longer safeguard to get out of that one. Zayas on the flank, looks for aiming here as Faker has come back again one more time. Void Seeker connects. Zayas going to get out of their life, not going to be so lucky as Vickler comes in as well. Charm he's will back. connect onto Ona, and now Ona's trying to get himself into safety, but he's not going to be able to. Faker gets over the wall, and this is messy. Super Mega Death Rocket just cruises Ooh. by. And our owner's just going to wave to it as it passes uh, towards Narnia. As Hook, not going to connect there, onto aiming. Starting to hurt. The thing that I'm scared of right now, in, like, if you're a T1 fan, this is relevant. It's the fact that Rascal is their gold lead, and he's on a champion that can affect every team fight, right? If he plays uh, it well. Hold up. Um, as I'm going to cast a curse the heck out of him immediately. As Ona looking to try and lock him down. Yeah, just walks past him. And uh, yes, that's. I apologize, KT fans. Come on, Atlas. Oh, Be better. God. That was just unacceptable, honestly. Uh, as now, we're looking for Soul Point for T1. Void Seekers are dangerous. And Ona was sitting at 50% health. Carry moves on over. And that is going to be the secure. There is a lot of Baron damage. Remember, AP Kaiser does so much Baron damage. As Carry's going to set up the box. Hook is going to connect, and Rascal, he's mini now one more time. Ona almost makes it out of there, but remember, there is no Faker. He is still dead. Vickler out of the fight, though, as Gumiushi flashes right at the last second as the dredge line was coming in, and now Rascal needs to be respected. Zayas trying to run this one out. Good sidestep there as T1 needs to play this perfectly. The Flame Chompers, they come forward. The Crush is there as well. As he takes the lens, and the Hook's going to connect. Life is going to get taken down, and now Faker's in for the cleanup. The Rockets will land, and I have no idea in hell how T1 did that. How did Guma live? And then somehow Faker makes it back. And also oh, now fun. we've got another fight. His cousin's going to go golden. He is really, really dead, everyone. Gumi, she gets excited after that. And T1 fans are going to follow suit. Life now 
Gonna get taken for a walk. Big Daddies do not like that. He will be taken down. It's a double kill now for Gumiyushi. As they don't have true front line. Tremor Sands. Yeah, Tremor Sands is so valuable. They do indeed. Faker comes around the wall. They do manage to deny the soul, but can they win the fight now as KT looking for even more? The three-man Nara into the wall. The Kais is there tidying it up. Fickler grabs a triple kill now, and Ona is running for the hills. Faker, the last man standing, and it's Cuz that locks down that kill. This game is not over yet. The problem is they have no waves, everything is pushing in. Faker, as his team loses the fight, gets himself an inhibitor turret. Yuji looking for Rascal here, aggressive positioning, but softening up the Nar is definitely good news here. For T1 fans, as in goes aiming, looking to just get him! But no, has to go into his Zonyas immediately, and the Flame Chompers are gonna say no aiming! What was that? Oh no, the Nar is now gonna come on through, but Rascal, remember, he was low health. And now inside their own jungle, they are going to tidy up the members of KT. Zeus has his big set of scissors out, and he's looking to cut down some KT stragglers. Oh. Gets his revenge first onto Rascal. Is now Faker dashing on forward. Locks down the kill onto his opposite number. Cuz trying to tunnel his way out, but there is a distortion. And Cuz is well and truly dead. Hey. Oh, okay, manages to take his tunnel out. But now with an open front door, K uh, T1 may just move in for the end, potentially. And aiming, he went for what might have been a game-winning play had it worked out with the wave state as it was, but instead it might have been the end of it. Well, he, they are coming these, up. Yeah, these are not going to last for very long as Cuz is just dead. That's three auto attacks. Aiming's gonna try and do it one more time as he rockets into the back line, but the Nexus just evaporates. Um, this one went to T1 this time around as Gumiushi close to 30K. Damn, only need to do a tiny little bit more and he would have got there. Um, but honestly, like a lot of these gold graphs and things like this almost didn't matter. It was each of these exchanges, each of these little skirmishes Congratulations, guys. Hi, guys. This is Jisoo for the Pop Interview Translation. We are joined by Zeus and Kuma Yusi from T1. How do you feel, Zeus? First off, I played so bad in game two, but I got carried, so it feels great. Then Kuma Yusi, who drove that bus, how do you feel? First off, I'm happy to reach the 14 match win streak tie. And also, KT Rolster played so well today. So it was a, a very neck and neck series, but I'm happy that we, in the end, was we were able to secure a 2 0 victory. Yeah, in the voice comm, you could hear T1 players saying KT is so good. So, which part of KT was so powerful? I think their movements, their setups, you know, they were keep trying to make plays. They were keep trying to find picks, and we actually got punished. And also in the late game as well, the way they played the map was so good. But still, just like Kuma, you mentioned about the record. With this victory added to your board, you guys are tied with 2015 SKT, and you are secured at least second place of the split. How do you feel about that? First off, I mean, like, being able to tie that record, I feel so honored, it feels great, and also, now that we secure the spot in playoffs round two, it's so great, you know, I'm so happy. And Guma Yusi, T1 barely loses once you have a very long game. And a, a lot of T1 fans are relying on to that late game power as well. How is that even possible? First off, you know, I think everyone is on a really high skill level and their mechanics, if, especially during the team fights, are so good. Our macro is on point, so we are able to somehow kind of turn the game around in the late games. I have a question about the picks in today's series. I think Zeus, you were doing a fantastic work in game number one, especially on that Cannon. Cannon versus Gwen is a very popular matchup in other regions, but not in the LCK. So could you break down your choice regarding that pick? In fact, Cannon is really good. He's really viable. 
very powerful, but early on on the split, Kennen had some bad results. So uh, not a lot of teams are trying to pick that again, but I think it's a very good pick. So Kennen is really good, but you know, a lot of people are actually thinking that Gwen blind pick gets punished so well by the counter picks. I think Gwen is a high priority pick in terms of the blind pick, but still she's very versatile. She has very high cap, you know, capability. So I think she's a really good pick, in fact. Game number one, your cannon was doing a fantastic work in the very end. So here's the replay of that play. So how far did T1 set up for this play? Did Keria get caught or did he set up for this play? So at this point, Kyria was trying to place a ward for my TP. So we were trying to set up for that, and then the opponents actually kind of invested too much onto that Alistar. So I tried to kind of TP in to cover Kyria. And Guma, as an AD carry, following up for that kind of a fight is not that easy, right? Well, when I'm playing games, I don't really look at other kind of areas. You know, so I was just farming on the mid lane and I realized that we are, we are having a huge fight in the jungle. So I was like rushing to join them. And Kai'Sa is slowly climbing up the tier list, especially a pick in order to round out the dive comp. Kaisa, in fact, um, some people think, yeah, I mean, it is true that she is weak in lane, but her late game potential is really high. And I think she's viable. I think it comes down to the picks on the top side of the map, but I still think that she's so weak in lane, so I don't really prefer Kaisa right now. And also, we had some some poos by Gumayusi and Kyria throwing some punches to the camera. What was that about with you and Kyria? I mean, that was a request from Kyria, in fact. So I initiated that action, and Kyria followed up. Are we gonna see another one next time? I mean. Some teams are striking poses in that tunnel, so we are following the trend, so we might be able to add some more. Zeus, what about you? Well, I was not really on that hype, but looking at the current situation, I think I might have to follow them in the next match. And Zeus, a lot of fans are in love with the chemistry between you and owner. And also Guma Yusi, a lot of fans are waiting for your dance move. The peekaboo dance, what's that about? I mean, some people think, so, so our players are having a top like, I'm gonna dance if a camera stands in front of me, I'm gonna do a peekaboo. But I don't think this is the right situation. Looking forward to seeing that kind of a ceremony in the future. And today was a very meaningful day for T1. But still, I'm curious about your individual goals. What's your goal for the split? Guma, you see first? These days, because my team is on a hot streak, I actually kind of getting caught off guard because my team is so powerful, you know? So I hope I can get rid of those plays and I hope I can pull off a perfect play and I will do my best until the end of the playoffs. Me, of course, winning the LCK in my personal goal. Because this is my first split as a starter, I hope I can join the all-pro team. And I think both of the players really deserve that spot. And your next opponent is Guangdong Freaks, and you will set a new record 15 match win streak. What's your mindset heading into that series? I think Guangdong recently, you know, they were on a winning streak. But too bad they're playing against us this time around. I think they're going to lose. You know, it feels bad because I'm playing against my former teammate, but with that victory against Guangdong, we will make a 50-match win streak record.
and a lot of fans are supporting you guys and also hoping the best of you guys, especially staying safe and, you know, staying healthy. Any last message you would like to send over to the fans? I mean, COVID, yeah, it's getting so close. So we hope all the fans stay safe and healthy. And this will be the end of the interview from Zeus Kumayusi, and I'm going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you.